I hope you're having a great day. Well, today I want to talk about copper and I want to talk about a simple lifestyle change that we could be uh, going wrong with. You see, uh, good health, nutrition, exercise, all of these things are great for us, but there's something called overdoing it. And sometimes we get obsessed with trying to be too healthy. And we have this common belief that if I do more of something which is good, I'm gonna get healthier. So like the simple misconception is, we know fruits are healthy for us, but some people think that if they eat more fruits, they're gonna get healthier. But it doesn't really work that way. Or people think of a superfood and they think if they have more of that superfood or more of a supplement that talks about great health benefits, they're gonna get healthier and healthier. But we need to understand that too much of anything is bad for us. You know, anything that nature has given to us has to be done in moderation. And like I always say, each and every one of us are unique, which is why we always need a unique approach towards health. And one shoe won't fit everyone. It's as simple as that. Some people will need more of a particular vitamin. Some people may need less of it. So when we understand this, it, the next question would be, what's right for me? We have to live our lives mindfully to realize that, you know, every one of each of us are individual and, you know, we need to find out our own path when it comes to nutrition, exercise and all of that stuff. A simple example is if, you know, CrossFit is a great way of working out. Some people get brilliant results, but some people get injuries. Some people tend to put on more weight, simply showing you that everything doesn't have to suit you. Everyone's individual, everyone's unique, and it's different. Well, now going back to India, because the first question about copper would be going back to India, most people stored their drinking water in copper vessels. Well, you see, that's different. Uh, that was great at that time. Things have changed right now. Today, we have a lot, more a lot more of estrogen dominance. So even if you go back into the olden days, people could eat carbs at all meals because they were more active. So there they weren't diabetes, people wouldn't put on weight. But today, if you tend to eat carbs and you're sedentary, you tend to have diabetes and you tend to have all of these weight issues and all of these problems. So yes, it's true in ancient India, people stored their water, their drinking water in copper vessels, and it was great for them. But today we need to be careful of something called copper toxicity. Now copper is a trace mineral. When we say trace mineral, it's required in minute amounts in the human body. So if you cross, if you cross what is required in your body, it becomes toxic. We all know that you can have a toxicity of all vitamins in the body. Vitamin A toxicity can cause liver damage. Vitamin D toxicity can affect your entire hormonal imbalance and your bones. Every vitamin in excess can cause toxicity in the human body, which is why even supplements have to be managed the right way. Just because it's sold without a doctor's prescription doesn't mean you can go on popping supplements. You need to be careful of toxicity. So copper has a role in your reproductive system, in your glandular health, and in your nervous system, which means if you have a deficiency, it can affect your reproductive system, your glandular system, and your nervous system. At the same time, if you have toxicity, it can also in impact all of these three systems in the human body. Now what happens is, why copper is so dangerous for us is we need to understand how it works in the human body. When you have more estrogen, when you have more estrogen than required in the human body, it retains copper. You see, the human body has this fantastic mechanism when we have a little bit of too much, it has the ability to detoxify. But there's also a mechanism in the human body which if it's not working right, we can have an overload or storage of vitamins and, and trace minerals and it creates toxicity. So for example, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E and vitamin K are fat soluble, which means your fat stores these vitamins, which means it's very difficult to get it out of your system. But vitamin B, the entire vitamin B spectrum is water soluble. So if you go into toxicity, you can flush it out by drinking excess water and detoxifying yourself. Coming back to toxicity, when you look at thyroid problems and when you look at autoimmune problems, you will find that most of these problems happen in women. Now, women tend to have more estrogen than men. Men have more testosterone than women, although men and women have estrogen and testosterone as well. But a woman tends to have more estrogen, and especially living in a world today where there is estrogen dominance, even in young girls, because of the amount of estrogen in milk, in plastics, in food, in our flow cleaners, chemicals, cosmetics, and all of that stuff, we tend to have estrogen dominance. And we know this with the amount of ER positive breast cancers, endometrial cancers, ovarian issues, PCOD, and all of these reproductive lifestyle disorders in the human body, most of them are caused because of excess estrogen in the human body. So if a woman is already carrying excess estrogen, she's retaining more copper. And because she retains more copper, or men retain more copper, it creates more problems. 
So how does excess copper in the body affect the thyroid gland or autoimmune? So it's very simple, basically, copper and heavy metals basically enters the thyroid gland and it basically decreases the conversion, the T3, T4 conversion, basically impacting your thyroid stimulating hormone, which is your TSH. So what happens is, because you have excess copper, it is actually blocking your conversion, which means you can actually cause a thyroid problem with excess copper in your body, or you could delay the healing and create more toxicity in your blood. Now, birth control, you know, birth control, copper IUDs, contraceptives, hormone therapy, xenoestrogens, that's estrogen that, you know, fake estrogen that mimics the actual estrogen. You find that in polluted air, you find that in cosmetics and creams, you find that in adulterated milk, you find that in plastics. All of this increases the estrogen in the body, which means that body will retain more copper. And if you keep copper in the body too long, it is going to cause a problem with your reproductive system, your glandular system, and your nervous system. So I made a whole list and this whole study came out where I was speaking to a lady in Canada a few nights ago and she was discussing her child's ADHD and autistic problem. And we went to the root cause of the diagnosis and then I found out that this child has been drinking water from a copper bottle throughout the day, which means all of the water had copper. So we've now asked him to do a heavy metal test and to check the amount of copper in the blood. I went back into that research because ADHD spectrum, autism spectrum has everything to do with the nervous system again. And it is unbelievable, you know, how science shows you that even a little bit of extra copper in the body, which is copper toxicity, has a link with ADHD and autism. It has a link with depression and anxiety because excess copper in the body lowers, lowers dopamine. So you have a trace mineral which is an excess in the body, lowering your dopamine, which is creating the feel of, feeling of depression and anxiety. And if someone's already depressed and anxious, it's actually magnifying the whole thing because it is actually lowering your dopamine. So you could be trying everything in the world, but sometimes all you may need to do is reduce the amount of copper in your system so that your dopamine production automatically goes up. Panic attacks, PMS. PCOD, endometriosis, we explained the whole connection with excess estrogen, more copper retained in, this, in the human body. Infertility, even something as infertility, hair loss, something called SIBO, which is your small intestine bacterial overgrowth. That's a problem that so many men and women have, which basically means your microbiome is out of whack. You have bloating, you have digestive issues, you have malabsorptions of nutrients, you have a leaky gut syndrome, you have auto, uh, autoimmune disorders. All of this is caused by SIBO, which is your small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Some people call it candida. And we're seeing more and more research of how excess copper in the human body actually promotes the growth of your bad bacteria or something called candida, which affects most of us. It makes us gain weight. It makes it difficult to lose weight. It causes thrush in women. It causes vaginal infections and vaginal uh, discharge, something called thrush. It causes bad bread. It causes you to have that yellow coating on your tongue. All of that is related to your gut. You have headaches, migraines, arthritis, which is another form of autoimmune disorders. And uh, yeah, and it affects your joints as well. So you see, like they rightly said, a Nobel Prize winner, winner rightly said that even the deficiency or excess of one vitamin or mineral can cause innumerable problems. So I'm not just saying that reducing your copper is gonna solve all these problems, but if you're trying to holistically heal at a root cause level, it is very necessary for you to look at your copper levels. Now, you know you're overdoing it on copper because there are a lot of people today who still drink all of their water out of copper. We see people roaming with these copper bottles. It's great to have that one glass of copper water in the morning, that is great for you. But if you're constantly having copper water throughout the day, there is a huge chance that you have excess copper in your body. And if you have more estrogen in your body, you are retaining that copper in your body. Now, what are, we, what are some of the ways to naturally, naturally reduce this? Again, constipation. We've spoken innumerable times about constipation, especially when a woman is con constipated, your estrogen levels automatically reactivate in your liver, in your body, making a cycle of estrogen dominance. So you wanna make sure that you avoid constipation at all costs. Detoxifying your liver and your kidney using your normal foods, going on to detox plans, which are simple and well-balanced for your body. So helping your body detoxify will help you automatically, you know, get rid of some of the copper that you have. Rest and sleep. Why rest and sleep? Because when we rest and sleep, the body automatically has this intelligent mechanism to detoxify us from everything that's excess in the human body. 
Cruciferous vegetables, vegetables which are rich in sulfur, have the ability to bind onto copper and move it out of your system, into your bloodstream, and you basically get that out of your system. So again, it comes down to your diet. Uh, a beautiful supplement called milk thistle, which is found in most supplements across the world, has the ability to help you with detoxifying copper out of your system. B vitamins, again, your B vitamin spectrum, so you could do a B complex under your doctor's supervision or professional supervision if you have copper excess in your body. Now, zinc, if you have excess copper in your body, having foods rich in zinc or getting a, a zinc supplement prescribed by your doctor or your medical professional will actually help you flush out more copper because the more zinc you have, the less copper that you have in the human body. And then of course we have exercise because when you sweat, you automatically detoxify, especially heavy metals in the human body. Now, we shouldn't have to think that we should get all of our copper through drinking copper, drinking water from a copper jug or a copper filter throughout the day. Like I said, in the olden days, it was different. We didn't have as much of estrogen as we have today. Okay, today it's different. We have so much more estrogen in our food chain, in our air that we breathe, even in your water samples, we have all of this stuff. So we have to make changes. Having a little bit of copper water in the morning is great for you. You will also get copper from your diet if you're eating a balanced diet. What are some of the food sources which are rich in copper and exactly the amount of copper that we require on a daily basis? If you have a portion of nuts, unsalted nuts in your diet, if you have a portion of unsalted seeds in your diet, things like spirulina, things like your green leafy vegetables, things like your lentils, and people who are non-vegetarian, your meats and your eggs, and even mushrooms have sufficient copper that your body requires. Remember, it's a trace mineral, which means you need it in traces in the human body. So it really actually comes back to a balanced diet. If you're having a balanced diet that has your fruits, your vegetables, your nuts, your seeds, your lentils, your whole grains, you are automatically getting copper. Now, a lot of women, and that's why I'm against multivitamins, a lot of people take multivitamins. Multivitamins are not necessary unless you have a deficiency or you have a very poor diet. Because someone who has estrogen dominance in the body, taking a multivitamin, which also has copper in, is only adding more problems to your entire body. So that's why we try to get people to eating and trying to get most of your nutrition from your normal foods and only take a multivi multivitamin if you have a deficiency or it is prescribed by a professional to you. So through a balanced diet, you should get enough of copper and through maybe your one glass in the morning of copper. I saw a lot of comments already where people are saying, I'm allergic to copper, I get hyperacidity. Well, there's even a connection of excess copper with high blood pressure and low blood pressure. So you see, trace minerals handle innumerable, uh, handle a number of problems and chemical functions in the human body. So if you have too less of it, it's gonna cause a problem. If you have too much of it, it's also gonna cause a problem. So you wanna make sure that when you're trying to holistically heal, you wanna to get to the root cause level of everything from vitamins to minerals and everything else. So keep it simple, have a little bit of copper water in the morning, but having copper water throughout the day is definitely gonna to lead to copper toxicity in your blood and in your system. And that has a link with almost everything and more that we just spoke about. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.